Hi, it's Cheyenne. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a Dollar Tree book haul. I went to Dollar Tree two separate times, once a couple weeks ago and again today. I'm going to be starting off with the graphic novels that I had got and the first one is Spill Zone by Alex Povland and Scott Westerfield, I think. Here's what it looks like. And I know this is just about a quarantine. People are in quarantine apparently and I can just <laughs> I, I basically when I went to go buy the, the, these books I just was like oh my gosh the art looks so amazing I gotta get it I gotta get it and it says no entry no photos no survivors the zone defies understanding three years ago in upstate New York an event destroyed Addison's hometown and forever changed reality within its borders. Overnight, Poughkeepsie became a waking nightmare, home to unearthly lethal dangers, now quarantined from the rest of the world if you dare to enter the spill zone. Armed with only a camera, Addy ventures into the zone to photograph its twisted phenomena, but getting close for the perfect shot can mean death or worse. Within the spill zone, something sinister awaits and calls Addison's name. And I just want to see what it looks like because I didn't really have time to check in the store. I was kind of like in and out. But wow, this is so nice. Look at it. This is so nice. I'm so excited to read this. And I just wanted to treat myself. Honestly, my birthday's coming up. I'm like, gosh, I really want more books. Like, I don't have enough. And I just want more. And I love going to Dollar Tree to find them. So the next book I got is The Cute Girl Network by Greg Means, M.K. Reed, and jo Joy Flood. And this is what it looks like. It says Jane thinks Jack is the bee's knees, but the Cute Girl Network disagrees. A rich and genuine skater punk romance eloquently picking apart our no notions of good versus evil and da dating. A real page turner. And I didn't show you what the last art looks like, but here's an example of the pages so nice and the last book here's an example of the pages. so I'm very excited to read both of these so into the novels that I got first I got Gossip in the Night by Sarah Porter and I'm not really sure what this is about, but it is an urban fantasy. It says, in the enchanted kingdom of Brooklyn, the fashionable people put on cute shoes, go to parties and warehouses, drink on rooftops at sunset, and tell themselves they've arrived. A whole lot of Brooklyn is like that now, but not Bass's working class neighborhood. In Bass's neighborhood, where she lives with her stepmother and bickering stepsisters, one might stumble onto magic, but stumbling away again can become an issue. So I'm guessing this is just a fantasy. I think so. That's why I picked it up. And I'm very excited to get into this sometime soon, sometime in August, honestly. I'm going to read all of these books in August because I have nothing better to do until I start work. So I can just knock these books out easily. Because how many pages is this? Less than 300 pages. So, yeah, I'm excited for this. The next book is Our Kind of Cruelty. Here's what it looks like. It says, My case fought his way out of a brutal childhood and into a quiet if lonely life before he met Verity. And I remember what this book is about. This guy basically obsesses over a girl and I guess he stalks her and becomes like, su like super, I don't know, just super into, he's super into her and he's just stalking her. And it's about their story. And it says right here, this is a love story, but it's crossed out. So it's not a love story. So I'm guessing something toxic is gonna happen. He seems very toxic and he keeps track of her every move. So I'm very excited and I will let you guys know what I think about this book. And this is The Possession by Sarah Fanley Murphy. Here's what it looks like. And I know this book is about a society of girls who pretend to be people's loved ones and there's this one woman who pretend like they they completely transform like their faces completely transform in their bodies to look exactly like 
someone's past wife and that's what this girl does this woman does and she wears his favorite lipstick and basically she ends up pursuing him even though they're only supposed to meet one time and I know it's very cost costly to get this done and it's the Elysian Society a private service that allows grieving clients to reconnect with lost loved ones she and her fellow workers known as bodies were the discarded belongings of the dead and swallowed pills called lotuses to summon their spirits numbing their own minds and losing themselves in the process so yeah it's about this girl named Sylvia I think and Patrick so I'm very excited to read this and when I saw this I was like I need to get it and the cover is so nice it's so nice and some of these copies I've seen at my library so I was like I'm glad I got this for only a dollar because I love having my own copy of stuff the next book is one that I got today and it's the memory painter and it's by Gwendolyn Womack it says Brian Pierce is an internationally famous artist who's painting have dazzled the world but there's a secret to Brian's success. Every canvas is inspired by an unusually vivid dream. All his life Brian has wondered if his dreams are in fact someone else's memories and he dares to hope that one day his art will lead him to someone who understands. Lynn's Jacob is a neurogenetics <laughs> I can't say this neurogeneticist haunted by a recurring childhood nightmare. When she recognizes the details of her nightmare in one of Brian's paintings, she decides to track him down. Their meeting triggers Brian's most powerful dream yet, a vision of, team, of a team of scientists who on the verge of discovering the cure for Alzheimer's dies in a lab explosion decades ago. As Brian becomes obsessed with the mysterious circumstances surrounding the scientist's death, his visions begin to reveal what happened at the lab as well as a mis deeper mystery that may lead all the way back to the ancient Egypt. Together, Brian and Lynn start to discern a pattern, but a deadly enemy watches their every move, and he will stop at nothing to ensure the past stays buried. So I'm so excited to read this. It's by Harper Perennial. I guess that's the publishing company. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, it kind of reminded me of Harper Collins. Maybe it is the same thing. I don't know. but. It's so cool to find this book, and I really want to dive in. I think I've seen this book twice at Dollar Tree, and I was like, okay, I should definitely just get it because I'm interested in this whole dream thing because I'm a big dreamer, and I always want to know what my dreams mean. And so to see somebody else find, a, find out that their dreams may be connected, I'm very excited to see what happens with Brian and Linz. Then I got the book Meant to Be by Julie Halpern. This is what it looks like. And like I said, I don't know what most of these books are about, like off the top of my head. I was just reading through the descript reading through the um, synopsis or the description. And I was like, okay, I really want to read this. It says, what if your soulmate was decided for you? It started happening a few years ago. The names of MTBs, meant to bees, appear emblazoned on the skin at age 18. Agatha's best friend has embraced the phenomenon and is head over heels in love with her MTB. But Aggie isn't so sure. As she struggles with accepting her MTB fate, she finds herself falling for a co-worker at the local amusement park. Is he a better match? What does Agatha really want in a mate? And moreover, what does she want for herself? With her trademark wit and irreverence, acclaimed author Julie Halpern explores an age-old question. Who are we meant to be with? Honey, that's what I want to know too. <laughs> who are we meant to be with? And I'm just so excited to read this book. It's clearly going to be a love story there's a heart on the cover and it says screw destiny so we'll see what this book is about the next book is Allie by Anna Banks a New York Times bestseller and the cover is so beautiful and it's so nice like I really love this cover oh my gosh I read the series that this author has wrote I didn't even realize this in the story this is so exciting it's the Serena Legacy. I read the Poseidon um, and then of Triton and then I didn't finish of Neptune but I still need to finish it and I read that earlier last year. Oh my gosh and she, I don't know why that name wasn't familiar to me, Anna Banks. Like I'm so excited to read this. You guys just don't know. I love this author and her writing. So it says, will her nemesis become her ally? Princess Sephora of Cerubal and King Turk 
of Theoria have formed an uneasy truce between their kingdoms since the deadly plague, plague began to rip through Theoria. Because their feelings for each other are entangled in politics and power, they must use their own trusted resources to find common ground. But when traitors with powerful allies arise from unexpected places, Tariq and Sephora face challenges that will change both of their kingdoms forever. Will they learn who to trust, including each other, in times to save their kingdoms, their relationship, and even their lives? So, oh my, I just, guys, I really cannot believe that I found Anna Banks. Look, I read the, the first two books. That's so crazy. Wow. So cool. Okay. And the next book is Exile for the for Dreamers by Kathleen Baldwin, a strange house novel. So I'm not sure if this is the first book, but I still wanted to pick it up because it seemed interesting and I really like the cover. It kind of looks like a s historical romance type cover to me and I just or a romance novel cover to me, so I just really wanted to check this out as soon as I seen it check this out. I'm used to going to the library. I meant bye. Um, it says, it's 1814. Napoleon has escaped his imprisonment on Elba. Europe is in shambles. Britain is at war on four fronts. And at Strange House, a school for unusual girls, five young ladies are secretly being trained for a world of spies, dipl diplomacy, and war. Exile for dreamers. Tess Abuson can't run far enough or fast enough to escape the prophetic dreams that haunt her. Dreams that bring nothing but death and grief. And Tess refuses to accept that she may be destined for the same madness that destroyed her mother. Until her disturbing dreams become the only means of saving Lord Ravencross, the man she loves, and her fellow students at Strange House. Tess's old friend, the traitorous Lady Dineska, and Ghost, the ruthless leader of the Iron Cross, have returned to England, intent on paving the way for Napoleon's invasion. Can the young ladies of Strange House prevail once more, or is England destined to fall into the hands of the power-mad dictator? Fans of genre blending, romance, and action will love this read the era alternate history novel filled with spunky heroines, handsome young lords, and dastardly villains. So like I said, it looks like a historical novel, and it definitely is, and that's definitely why I picked it up. So we finally reached our last book, and it's Stranded by Bracken MacLeod, and here it is. So I believe this story is about these pirates or people on a ship somehow become sick because of the fog, and there's a guy named Noah who isn't affected by the fog, and that's why people on the ship hate him. And it's just about their story. And it says, there's a badly battered punishing storm on their way to res resupply an oil company drilling platform. The crew of the Arctic Promise find themselves sailing blindly without functioning navigation or communications equipment. Lost and unable to call for help, they push ahead into unfamiliar waters as an ominously thickening fog envelopes them. One by one, the crew falls prey to a mysterious illness. Ailing from debilitating headaches and nosebleeds, the weakening sailors begin to see shadowy figures haunting the ship. Deckhand Noah Cabot is the only person unaffected by the strange disease plaguing the others on board, which does little to ease their growing dislike of him. Dismissing Noah's warnings of the worsening conditions he's observed, the, ca the ship's captain, his antagonistic father-in-law, William Brewster, presses on until the open sea freezes into solid ice and they can go no further. Brewster orders the men overboard in an attempt to break the ship free by hand. As they struggle with sledgehammers and pickaxes against the ice-crushing ship, the fog clears, revealing a faint shape in the distance. Desperate and in ever-declining health, they have no choice but to reach on foot what they hope is their destination. Despite their distrust of him, Noah finds himself leading the few able-bodied deckhands on a perilous journey across the ice and into an uncertain future where they must fight for their lives against the elements, the ghosts of the past, and ultimately their themselves. So this is a long description, but I'm super excited to see where this goes and to see what happens. And with this fog, 
with what they're gonna face while they when they get off the ship with the conditions I know it's super cold I mean the water froze into ice how are they gonna survive I think it's just crazy but I'm super excited to read this and let you guys know what I think so that's gonna be the end of this haul I plan to do another haul pretty soon with books that I'm going to be ordering off of Amazon past books that I've ordered but I still want to haul because I haven't read them and they're still in pristine condition and um, I normally order paperbacks but we'll see what I get. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Um, I know you guys, some of you guys who follow me on Twitter requested that I make this video and I just wanted to put it out there because I've found so many good books that seem so cool and so exciting and I'm just so freaking excited for Al Al Ally because I know the author, I've read from the author, and I'll finally get to read more books from her and read this book. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.